I, I, you know, it really is, um, you know, being in bed, even if you are a night owl before 12 o'clock would allow your body enough time to get the deep sleep it needs. If you're also allowing enough opportunity for quality sleep. So a lot of times night owls, they stay up too late and they get up too early. And, and that's where we get into trouble with what's called sleep debt and sleep debt carries over into the next day. And, and then it's, it becomes a vicious cycle. So yeah, again, those money sleep hours, if you will, are 10 PM and 2 AM. But I, I always like to recommend, Hey, don't really don't go to bed later than 12 PM, regardless of your chronobiology. If, if you have control over that. You know, what's interesting is um, even if I get eight hours of sleep, but I go to bed past midnight, I wake up feeling hungover. And I just, I don't feel like I really did get rest. And it is something about kind of going past, I'll call it the witching hour for me, um, where I just, I don't feel the same as if I were to go to bed between you know, normally between 1030 and 1130 for me is kind of, is my window. Is that a very individual thing based on your chronotype, would you say? Yeah, it is. And what's really interesting about what you said is, again, we're talking sleep quality, but it's also what stage of sleep you wake up in. So what can happen is if you're consistent with your sleep schedule, and then all of a sudden you have a night where you go to bed too late, it throws off your sleep architecture and you might wake up during like a deep sleep phase or, or um, really a deep sleep phase, which then kind of regardless of the quality of your sleep, if you wake up in deep sleep, you're going to feel groggy. You're going to feel off um, mm -hmm. be, and it's not ideal. So, you know, now, now there's some really cool technology coming out in mattresses that they're able to sort of tune that to your, your, your circadian clock and wake you up at the right sleep cycle so you don't get those those kind of groggy hangovers. Yeah, and boy, talk about like setting yourself up and I bet we could have a whole nother podcast about what the best bedding is, what the best mattress is and I'm sure you have some recommendations, but I know that you mentioned to me that the mindset around sleep is something that you're really interested in. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you work with people on I guess, mastering their mindset around sleep? I would love to, because it's, this is something that I'm very passionate about. And it's, it's very valuable for people to understand this, that especially people that are struggling with their sleep right now. Uh, first and foremost, sleep is a natural biological process that happens when you remove the barriers to it happening. And what I find in the work that I do is that a lot of those barriers are actually between our ears, um, mm. meaning our thoughts and our beliefs. So what can happen is sleep is the one thing that the harder you try at, the worse you get at it <laughs> because you can't force and control something like sleep. It actually, what, what that'll do is it'll actually create more stress and more anticipatory anxiety, big word, <laughs> mm. which then keeps the cortisol dripping and keeps you up. So first and foremost, it's really important for understanding the people that have issues, either getting or staying asleep, especially the anxious type of people and, and who doesn't have some anxiety right now with what's going on in the world. Right. Um, it's really important that you do not fall into the trap of trying to force or control your sleep. So this is such a simple shift, but it's extremely powerful to just literally accept whatever the night brings, whether it's great sleep or not, shifting into acceptance, not trying to do more things so that you sleep is extremely simple and extremely powerful frame of mind to take if you're somebody right now that is struggling with sleep. It's, it's, it's one of the, it's like one of the simplest things that people can do is literally stop trying to sleep. Mm. It's crazy. It sounds it's, so simple. And you know, here's how I would equate that too. It's kind of like, you know, when you have a lot of anxiety about getting up for something like I, you know, I would get a lot of anxiety if I had to get up early for a flight or if I would have like an early, you know, uh, interview, live interview or something like 
it, it's like that anticipation of that thing that is looming. And, you know, I think we've all had nightmare situations where we slept in or we slept through an alarm or whatever, the alarm didn't go off. And then you get up in a panic. I think that same sort of anxiety can happen when you don't sleep well and you have this obsession about, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to fall asleep? So I'm sure there are lifestyle aids though that can help you overcome that. Is that part of your approach to helping your clients? Yeah, it is. It is. And that, that is a type of anticipatory anxiety that attaches itself to sleep. Um, so when we work with clients, we first and foremost, we, we address the mind. So the, the ways that the mind gets in the way of the body, then we address the body and then we address the environment. And most people um, try to just address the environment and then maybe they'll start to get into the body, but they totally disregard the mind. And a great night of sleep actually starts as soon as you wake up. So mm -hmm. what you do throughout the entire day is going to dictate whether or not you're going to have a peaceful night. Mm -hmm. so, so if you're eating a lot of sugar and processed foods and empty carbs, and maybe your diet's not there, maybe you're dehydrated, maybe you're not exercising and moving your body. I'm just saying like, it's all about the healthy choices that we know that we should be making every single day. How, how much of an impact does that contribute to your ability to sleep? Massively. It really does. It really does. I mean, what's good for your health is also good for your sleep. Hmm. So it, you know, people definitely need to understand that if you're, if you have issues with your sleep, you have to be open to some habit change. You have to really look at, well, what are the foods I'm eating? When am I eating these foods? You know, am I hydrated? Am I mastering my stress, not just managing it? Um, you know, am I doing things that are, that are, conducive to my mental health so that I don't have a racing mind at the end of the night. That's one of the most common questions I get is, Hey, how, how, I have a racing mind. How do you turn off? How do I turn off my mind? My mind keeps me up. Mm. Can, and, does counting sheep work? <laughs> I wish it was that easy. Um, if counting sheep worked, we, we wouldn't be serving the hundreds of, of people that we're serving uh, to help them with, with their sleep. I, I wish it I was always, that like, easy. For some reason, that little image of sheep rolling around, I mean, it was such a, I don't know, growing up, for some reason, I heard that over and over again. But um, I think the idea is to meditate on something maybe, or to kind of distract yourself into falling asleep. And I know that you have a whole sleep science academy where you teach people everything from how to balance their sleep cycles to essential strategies to getting more deep sleep to supplements and, you know, things that maybe enable that. Can you share a little bit more about your sleep science academy? Yeah, well, essentially we, it's a holistic approach based in science. So we work with people just in that way. We look at how every aspect of their life impacts their sleep and how improving their sleep impacts every aspect of their life. And so we have a very methodical, systematic approach that we take that gets people amazing results without sleeping medication or even the need for anything, really, a new mattress or sleeping pills or uh, supplements or anything like that. Like those, though, there, is, there is time and a place for bedroom optimization and making a sleep sanctuary, and those can help with quality of sleep, but we take it way further than that. Um, you know, really looking at the psychology of sleep and the psychology of what creates these triggers of arousal um, and biochemically what's going on in the body that, that creates, you know, um, dysregulation of the circadian clock, which is our body clock, which keeps mm. us, you know, in this natural, healthy sleep cycles. So, so yeah, so we, we believe that the body will heal when you remove the barriers to it doing so and sleeps, you know, sleep issues aren't the problem. Insomnia is a symptom mm. and it's really important to understand that. And if you address the symptom, you, you know, it's, it's, if you address the symptom with treating the symptoms, you're not going to get sustainable results. You got to really look at what is the root cause of why am I not sleeping? And that's what we do at Sleep Science Academy. 
I would really encourage all of our listeners, and we have the link in the show notes here to download the um, the sleep science solution. So we have a link here, and you can get all of the information that Devin's talking about today in a way that I think will be very easy for people to understand. And why wouldn't we? I mean, I think ultimately, if and I love that you have a talk called the ROI of sleep. I think that's brilliant because I talk about the ROI of eating better. Um, mm. And it's so much bigger than just a, a, a fit body or great abs. You know, it's it's just the ability to thrive and the ability to go and get your dreams, so to speak, uh, pun intended. <laughs> so I think, you know, this is something that we can all use and and benefit from. If there was one thing, just one thing that you could share from your work and um, and what you've seen with people, what is one habit that we need to break when it comes to getting sound sleep? Is there one thing unanimously that you see across the board? Oh, gosh. Um, one of the biggest, the first thing that comes to mind, there, there's a lot, but I think it's eating too late. Mm. Eating because that gets in the way of deep sleep. So it's, it's, you know, you should have at least a three, preferably a four hour window between the last time something touches, crosses your, your lips and, uh, and, and, and your bed and bedtime. I love that. And that leads me to our final question, which you teed it up so beautifully. I ask all my guests the same question. If you could have one meal prepared by anyone, what would the meal be and who would make it? Uh, you know, it'd be my mom and it'd probably be your lasagna. <laughs> oh, yes. I love it. I love yeah. that you were so, you didn't even have to think about that one. Yeah. Yep. Is it meat lasagna? Is it veggie lasagna? Like what? what's so great about it? Uh, she, she makes it with love and sometimes it's meat and sometimes it's veggie. It doesn't matter to me. I love uh, it. I love yeah, it. It's comfort food, you know, Italian, Italian comfort food, which I don't really eat that much of these days, but it's, every uh, it's, once in a while you got to indulge Devin. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your knowledge and these great insights on sleep. Uh, for our Fit Tribe, make sure you check out the link in the show notes so that you can get into the sleep science solution as well. And what's a good place to follow you, Devin? Uh, Devin Burke Wellness on all the social channels, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube. Um, yeah, so I, I put a lot of stuff out on YouTube for those people that are interested in learning more. Perfect. Thank you again and have a blessed rest of your day. Thanks. Thanks for having me on. Take care. Hey, thank you so much for listening to this week's episode. I know you have a lot of choices out there of what to listen to, what to watch. So it means a lot to me that you're here with me. And hey, if you love this content, would you hit the subscribe button? I want you around. I don't want you to just show up for one episode and leave. I want you here, part of the conversation, a seat at this table. And while you're at it, would you share this with your friends and family? And if you take a screenshot and share it on your social media with a hashtag RFYBL for recipes for your best life, I'll make sure to personally give you a shout out and you may just be featured right here on the show. So until next time, here's to living deliciously and being the chef of your best life.